Check, mic check, 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 mic check, 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 mic check, check.
Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to church this morning. It's good to be with you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Tyler Kaufman. It's my privilege to be the pastor here at Leewood United Methodist Church. And uh, on behalf of the entire congregation, welcome to worship this morning. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're with us, whether you're joining now or later, and look forward to hearing about the ways that God might touch your life. If you are online, uh, just say hi to each other in the chat so we know you're here. And if you'd like to, say how many people are worshiping with you so we can uh, know how many people we're, we're praying for here this morning as we pray for all of us gathered. Uh, at this time, we have a few different announcements. Uh, Regina, would you like to kick us off? Is that all right? Hello? Okay, I'll, re I'll repeat all that. So for, for everyone watching here and at home, October 29th from 4 to 6 is Trunk or Treat. And it is so much fun. And even if you think you may not want to be here or be able to help, you can. I promise you, you can. Because we need people not just to help with games and pass out popcorn. We actually need people to sit by some trunks that have already been decorated for you and just pass out candy to super duper cute kids. We really need people to do that because our family is intending to do two trunks and if we can, Ryan and I will both volunteer to, to run games. So we need somebody to just sit probably even in between our two trunks and hand out candy and I think they're gonna be pretty cool. One is an I Spy trunk and we're thinking the other is karaoke Ghostbusters. So, I mean, that's also a little bit of a challenge to you. If you're doing a trunk, we're going to have prizes. First, second, and third are going to win Andy's gift cards. And I feel like it's the best ice cream in town. So please, please come. Please help however you can. Sign up. Even if you just want to drop off some candy, we have bins out for that. Or you can donate some money and just write candy, prizes for trunk or treat to pass them out. We would, we would really love that. There's going to be a lot if you want to invite some kids, grandkids, anybody that you know. Um, the police will be here. Fire department will be here. Lakeside Nature Center is going to be here, which is a fun new thing that Lisa set up for us. So I'm really excited about that. And then we still have the balloon artist, which is always a big hit. Um, if Tyler allows me, I'm also going to speak about the Holiday Marketplace for Missions. So um, <laughs> that will be coming up in a couple weeks after the Trunk or Treat. And if you've been before, it's a great place to shop. If you're creative, please make some wonderful things to contribute. If you're not creative but you have books, we would love to have the books you're no longer reading. If they're paperback or kids' books, please contribute them. We also need some cookies. We need some pies. If you want to help make pies, Cindy Dipple and Judy Ashford are once again helming that for us. And some jewelry. We can also use some, some jewelry. So you can talk to um, Marsha or Melanie or me or, or Nancy Wilson, and we will, we will try to help you with that. One new fun thing that's happening is Nicole's community Lar Larsh, Larsh, am I saying that correctly? They are also going to have a, a booth. And Kimberly emailed me on Friday, and I emailed her back, and I haven't heard back. So I'm not quite sure what's going to be in the booth. Do you know? Uh, I remember handmade art, art and craft, art and jewelry. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. So, so. 
Right. So the members who are differently abled are, have made some handmade items. So expect some cards, expect some jewelry, just all sorts of different things there too. And that's a wonderful way that we can actually support multiple things. Okay, I think that's it, Tyler. Well, I just have two final family, little family announcements. One is, uh, first of all, that we also need people to sit by our trunk at Trunk or Treat because I'll be judging and we'll be walking around Theo. So please uh, sign up to, to sit next to a trunk. And then also we have signups for the, uh, the Christmas pageant. Thank you. I cannot think of the word. The Christmas pageant, a very mixed up Christmas pageant. So please uh, email Melanie or myself and we'll make sure we get you on the list and know who all we have to participate with us. At this time, would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Gracious God, as we gather in this place, we thank you for the opportunity to meet with our faith family, to be connected with friends, and to be reminded of your great love and movement in our lives. Continue to pour into us and help us find encouragement and inspiration for the things you are calling us to do in this world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please stand for this morning's call to worship. Sisters and brothers, do good and be rich in the good things you do. Sisters and brothers, be generous and share with others. Sisters and brothers, wherever the journey may lead, God is always with us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please remain standing for this morning's opening hymn, number 102, Now Thank We All Our God. Thank you. 
to come forward for the children's message. Hello, 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 everybody. Um, so first, thank you to Pastor Tyler for changing the scripture, uh, the one he initially had. Do you remember what I said to you on Monday? I had no idea what I was going to do. But he changed the scripture, and then I got some ideas. So when I was a kid, I loved things that were little. Do you guys ever like to play with little things? Legos? You like Legos, yes. I have miniature, miniature Legos. The really teeny tiny ones that are super hard to put together. Like these, this tiny of Legos. Do you know who you should talk to? Uh, Lori. <laughs> she puts together the teeniest, tiniest Legos ever. I think she has made a grand piano that plays music. I know, hidden talents, right? It must be all of that, like, fine motor skills. So... Like, it's just Lego Technic. Is that it? I had no idea. Well, when I... I build, I build things that are out of the box. That's what we do too, right, Ian? We like, we like directions <laughs> in many things. What do you see in here? I see Christmas stuff. Oh, you see Christmas stuff. Yeah, yeah. You want to... Should we, should we put some of this stuff out? We're all so close. I'm not sure everybody can see. My mom's playhouse. It's called a doll house. Yes. Can you see? Can you see what's in there? There's a toaster. There is. There is a toaster, and you know what? There's toast in the toaster, and you can pop. I know. And understand, I got this when I was five, so it's over four decades old. It still works. Oh, oh hi guys. Now, what else do you see in here? Do you see anything else? What's What do you have? Can you show them what you have? Um, I have a milk carton. Can you show it to people? Can you show it? I got a frying pan. What about this thing? Let me try it out. Did you ever have a toy that looked like that? And a train. A train. Tell me what happened to that train. Is it together or is it broken? It's broken. Did you hear that? It's broken. 
Yeah. Um, many, many things in this dollhouse have been broken. Did anybody else have small toys that they broke and their parents fixed them over and over and over again? These are so cool, aren't they? So I know there are tiny little things in there. So while we talk about this, can we put all of these back in the box? And then I promise you, we can play with them later. The toys were my favorite. <gasps> Do you know this was actually my very favorite? I'm not sure if Gavin can see this. Can you figure out what it is? It's a, it's like the, the person who had too many kids, she had a, and they were, and they had to live in a boot house. The old woman that lived in a shoe that had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Can you see the children in there? It flips up. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> you want to play with these. I had no idea these would be so exciting. You guys like small things too. It's a lantern. So can we all work together and put these back in the box for just a moment, please? The dollhouse is probably 2,000% fraud. 2,000% fragile. It's true. You think 100%? You guys are like so far ahead of me on the children's message, you don't even know it. Can you put it away? Thank you so much. Oh, it's okay. You can just pop it in the box. The smallest couch ever. You should go to the Toy and Miniature Museum. So many teeny, ultra tiny things. So I still like, I, do you like little things still? I still like the, Minnesota, like the miniature Legos. You could put like the miniature Legos in a Duplo and it would be like, it would be like a box for them. You're right, it would. So as a parent, I have to tell you something. I think about little things. Oh, let's leave them in here. I know it's going to be so hard. Which one was that? Was it? Parents think about little things a lot, guys. Did you know that? Do we remind you when you say yes, we also say please? And when we say no, what do we say? No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And we remind you at night before bed to always do what? Brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. We say that a lot. And that's not a big thing. It's a, it's a little thing. And we might say, oh, at our house at least, Hmm, could you say that with a different tone of voice, please? Do we say that? A lot. A lot. And it seems like a little thing, right? But it's a big thing, like a medium. Well, you know, um, we're going to read one verse from today's scripture. And I want you to think about this verse. Does anybody want to read the one verse? Oh, you do? Okay. So it's from Luke chapter 16, and the verse that we are reading is verse 10. Uh, to where? To 11? Stop at 11. Whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much, and the one who is... I know it's broken up. Dishonest. Dishonest with little is also dishonest with much. Huh. Did you boys hear what that said? Okay, so if you're, if you do the right thing, even if it's a little thing, we can trust you to do the right thing, even if it's big. And if you do the wrong thing with little things, guess what? Do we trust you with big things? And God feels the same way. Now that may be like, oh, I can do all sorts of little things. That's not a big deal. But I want to tell you something that I think. Sometimes small things are harder than big things. Yeah, they are. They really are. So I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> the small Legos are so hard. I'm going to give you another example. Let's say you're on the playground. Do you guys go to the playground most days? No. No? Yes. Yes. Let's say you're on the playground and you see a $100 bill. What do you do with that $100 bill? Buy a lots of Legos. <laughs> what do you do with that? Buy 1,000 monster trucks. You do? It's just sitting on the playground. You, you take it and you put it in your pocket? Really? What do you think you do with it? Give it to others. 
Yeah. When you find something that's not yours at school, what are you supposed to do with it? Maybe give it to a teacher? I think so. I mean, it sounds great to use it, but it's $100. That's a lot of money. That's a school, that's a school could use to buy more new equipment. Or maybe the person that dropped it should have it back. I think that seems like an easier thing to do than if you see a quarter on the floor. But you you might decide to pick it up because it's not very big, right? Yeah. But what, what do you think we're supposed to do if we find something that's not ours? Absolutely. If it's big or small, you should say, is this somebody's? Because I want to give it back to you. Yeah, I would just take money that if it was just laying around and no one would take it, I would just take it and might just put it in a bank. I'm watching your mom right now. <laughs> but I appreciate your honesty, Timothy. I think it's actually harder to do the right thing with the quarter that you find. It's a lot easier to just be like, it's a quarter, nobody misses it, then $100. Now, I have another question for you. Just wait. I got another question. Let's say somebody is playing with an amazing, awesome new toy, and you're looking at the toy, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I really want to see it, and you just really don't think about it, and you quickly grab it, and you look at it. Has anybody ever done that before? <laughs> yes. And we all might do that with one little thing, but would any of us ever go to somebody's house and take all of their toys away from them? No. No. That would be mean. It would be terrible. But God is trying to remind us that whatever we do with little things determines your trust in big things. And Pastor Tyler's probably going to talk a little bit about what we do with money, but at your age, we don't have all that much money to deal with. So I want you guys to think. I want to be. I have three. I want to be Timothy's friend. He has three Target gift cards. I love, love Target. He, yeah. So what I want us to focus on, though, is in all things, big and small, we have to remember to do the right thing to do what God expects us to do, even if it's really hard in those little bitty things to do the right thing, because God gives us all sorts of wonderful gifts. But I also want us to remember, if we do make a mistake, will God forgive us? Yes. Always. God always has the grace to forgive us, and we can make a better choice next time. Would you guys pray with me? Dear God, I thank you for these three boys. And I thank you for all of the kids that are watching and all of the people that are in our hearts right now. I ask that you help us to all make good decisions about the gifts that you give us so that we can earn the faith you have in us and we can show your love to others. Amen. And if you found out real life huge house on the playground i don't know what you could do i don't either it'd be like magic and if you find something it's not yours you said see if it's someone else's absolutely if you find money that's really that's like a hundred dollars i would you should put it in a bank we're gonna we're gonna end right now <laughs> let's go back to our grown-ups bye Clearly, that's a uh, tough act to follow, but um, <laughs> Pastor Tyler had asked as we enter our stewardship campaign if uh, Lisa and I would just be willing to uh, share a few thoughts. So, of course, I, I said I would, and, you know, Lisa and I, it it's, doesn't seem possible, but we've been here about 20 years now. Uh, we, uh, when we moved to our home back on Inslee Lane uh, about that time, we kept driving past this church and thought, well, let, let's, it looks like a little church behind all those bushes, but let's go, let's go see what's there. Uh, so we walked through the west door where Lisa was uh, greeting this morning, uh, and I've always said it was a wonderful setup because we walked right into Delane Cohen 
and Helen Liston. So after, after meeting those two um, and got a little brief tour, we went into service and Annika went downstairs to, and some of you heard this story, went to Sunday school and we're out in the narthex and meeting everybody. It's a very friendly church, as I've always said. And of course, Annika comes bounding up those stairs and as only a four-year-old can announce at the top of her lungs in front of everybody, says, Mom, Dad, I like this church a lot better than our old church. <laughs> so, <laughs> 20 years later, you know, we're still here. But um, this is a very special place. It felt like coming home. Uh, it's welcoming. It's friendly. It's accepting. And I really do, when I do think of it as a church family here. Um, and we, we, as part of stewardship, you know, we believe our, our dollars and our time uh, are very well spent here, very well invested, um, and that we believe that we bring more positive impact uh, to our neighborhood, to our community, uh, to the world uh, through our gifts and service to this church uh, than any of us could do uh, individually. Um, I know that was brief, but that's, that's how we believe and that's how we feel. Um, and we certainly continue to uh, plan to continue to our support here and hope you will consider doing so as well. Thank you.
Well, we've had some lively moments and a lot of laughter this morning, and it has been good, at least for my soul. I hope it's been good for your souls as well. We come now to our time of prayer, and as we do, I have a mixed of uh, joy and sorrow announcement. Uh, Wayne Bird passed away this morning, and I uh, went over there this morning and saw Anne and Barbara. Uh, that's why Barbara's not in the, the choir this morning. Um, and given the circumstances, they're doing okay. Uh, they have a lot of phone calls going out and letting people know and family know. And so I just ask that you give them a little bit of space as they're going through their call list. Um, they had some of you on it as well and many of you on it. And uh, so I said, well, why don't I just make an announcement and so it's it's uh it's hard as you many of you know and you've known Wayne far longer than I have but a great man who touched many lives and it is been quite the week on Friday uh, was Bill Grubbs service memorial service and Wayne actually came to Bill's service uh, on Friday afternoon and to lose two uh, faith pillars in a faith community is always really difficult. So please keep the family uh, and one another in your prayers this morning. At this time, would you join me now in our time of prayer? Uh, we have uh, a community prayer that we'll read together and then I'll offer a pastoral prayer afterwards. Lord, we have depended on our own devices and means instead of trusting in you and your leadership. In our worldly ways, we have denied your power and refused to accept your loving help. We are like prodigal children as we have lost sight of your purposes for our lives. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to proclaim your good news. In Christ we pray. Amen. Would you join me now? Gracious God, we thank you for those who have taken words such as this to heart and who have sought to make a wonderful impact for your kingdom pouring into the lives of one another. There are so many of us gathered in this room that are here because of not just people like Bill and Wayne, but because of them. <laughs> who were persistent in making sure that we joined this faith community, this family. Be with us now in our grief this morning and help us move beyond sorrow to hope as we know they are now in a place of indescribable beauty with you. As you say, welcome home, good and faithful servant. Lord, we lift their souls up to you, and we ask you for your peace in our hearts. And as we do so, together we proclaim the prayer that Jesus taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, beginning with verse 10. Whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much, and the one who is dishonest with little is also dishonest with much. If you haven't been faithful with worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you haven't been faithful with someone else's property, who will give you your own? No household servant can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Pharisees, who were money lovers, heard all this and sneered at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves before other people, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued by people is deeply offensive to God. Until John, there was only the law and the prophets. Since then, the good news of God's kingdom is preached, and everyone is urged to enter it. This is God's word for us today. Amen. We go. <laughs> Has anyone here seen the PBS documentary on China's terracotta warriors? It came out a few years ago. Yeah, there's a couple in the perfect. Well, for the rest of you, it really is fascinating. Uh, the terracotta army is this collection of sculptures depicting the armies of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. And he ruled at a time when various provinces were at war with one another. He was this great military leader. He conquered province after province, and he created one unified nation, launching the Qin Dynasty, which is believed to be where China got its name. Qin Shi had an expansive vision for his country, and his public works projects included the unification of diverse states and their fortress walls into what later became known as the Great Wall of China and this massive national road system. Now, one of the emperor's greatest concerns was his own death. So he undertook a search for the elixir of immortality, which, of course, he did not find. And once he realized that he would, in fact, die one day, he used all of his wealth and power to begin building this city-sized tomb for himself. He also had artisans create a life-sized army of clay warriors to guard it. Now, the purpose of the cavalry and horses and soldiers was to protect the emperor in the afterlife. And the army took years and years to build. And by the time Qin Shi Huang died in 210 BCE, his tomb was filled with more than 8,000 soldiers plus chariots and horses on top of that. And here are some pictures that you're seeing on the screen to show you just how grand China's first emperor spent his resources on himself and his personal kingdom of self. Now, 200 years later and 4,000 miles away, a Jewish rabbi named Jesus of Nazareth began teaching people about another kingdom, a kingdom called the kingdom of God. And like Chin Shi, Jesus was bringing people together, but not in a nation of physical boundaries or a dynasty based on birthright. Jesus was welcoming people into a kingdom not made with human hands that would extend over every national boundary and unite people across time and space. Now, rather than teaching people to amass fortune and power in this life or creating a false sense of security for the afterlife, Jesus taught his followers to be generous with love, forgiveness, and kindness. And he taught them to be careful about the unusual gravity that money and possessions have that could draw people away from God's kingdom and away from that kindness and love and generosity. Now, a kingdom consists of three R's. Many anthropologists and 
Theologians talk about it this way. There's the reign, the realm, and the rule. The reign is the who. Who is the leader, the monarch? In in one case, Emperor Qin, the other, King Jesus, or whoever else we give our allegiance to. The realm is the where. It includes the physical places, but also the hearts of the people where the kingdom resides. It's the citizens and ambassadors. The kingdom is wherever the king is and the members of that kingdom are. And the rule is the governance, the way things operate, the guidelines for living in that specific kingdom, for being a citizen of that community. How do we live in that kingdom? Both Qin Shi Huang and Jesus were teaching about kingdom building, but those kingdoms looked vastly different. One built the ultimate storage unit, a temple the selfish kingdom of self, a a palace tomb guarded by terracotta warriors he thought would support him in eternity, but which were covered over with dirt and slowly broke down. Perhaps he simply didn't know a U-Haul does not go so good behind a hearse. The other, Jesus, would have none of that. He knew that those types of attachments would pull people away from one another, that the gravity of those possessions and things could separate them and make life difficult. And so he taught people to be rich toward God by caring for their neighbors and putting more love in the world through their actions and specifically said, Matthew chapter 6, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus taught these things because Jesus wanted the best for us, because he wanted the best for our lives, wanted us to be connected and to know that type of deep-seated joy that can come with living into the kingdom and making a difference in the world. The kingdom of heaven is not simply some far-off place to which some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away. The kingdom of God is also this kingdom that exists here and now whenever we do the will of God and align our lives with God's purposes. We just remembered two wonderful men who knew that and chose to live in such a way because Jesus taught his followers to be generous in such a way. He wanted you and me to bless others rather than gather our resources to ourselves. He wanted us to be this launching pad, if you will, for other people. What do I mean by launching pad? Well, I want you to take a look at this video. The the event took place at a camp called Summer's Best Two Weeks, and this inflated raft-looking thing is the blob. Uh, When one person sits on the end of the blob, it's not that much fun until that second person jumps off of the platform, lands on it, and launches the first person into the air, and they are catapulted forward. Now, everyone is enjoying launching and being launched in the video. But there is always one hesitant person. Those of you who have been at summer camp and experienced like this, you, you know there's always that one person that kind of clings to the rail as they scoot to the edge of the platform. I knew a guy like that named Tony. He understood the concept, but he wasn't wild about heights. And he, like a lot of people, when they see the kingdom of God, they get the concept, but don't want to take this risk to to step into it. It reminds me of a John Wesley quote. Do we have the, the quote we can throw up there? My fear is not that our great movement known as the Methodists will eventually cease to exist. 
or one day die from the earth. My fear is that our people will become content to live without the fire, the power, the excitement, the supernatural element that makes us great. The other people are jumping and launching each other, and then there's always a Tony. (laughs) But eventually, they make it to the end of the platform, And soon they are enjoying launching others and getting launched themselves, and everyone has a good time after a little reluctance. (laughs) But you can never forget the unforgettable look on their face once they've experienced it. That expression is much better than the one when they're hesitating. Being launched is thrilling, but also launching others. Notice those doing the launching are ecstatic as well. Now, I've seen experiences of people launching each other in church families and this church family as well. That's what living into the kingdom is all about. When you're generous with your church, you bless others. You launch others, if you will. And that's what the church attempts to do. And the most important times when it happens are when a church is in this swaying, teetering, tipping point, and it needs a budge in the right direction, to be launched in the right direction. What happens when something like COVID comes along? Do we recede and shut things down, or do we figure out new creative ways to move forward? Many of you were likely remember the Zoom meetings that Pastor Howard held each Wednesday and Friday. Now, during one of those earliest meetings, he was asked what the church needed in order to take the next step in providing some high-quality online worship for people. Well, Howard, with a few of you, figured out that the minimum ideal setup would be $10,000. And so he mentioned that. And at 85 and a lover of technology, a member decided to do some of his own research of what would be required to really make things well online. And later that week, he walked into the church office and dropped off an anonymous donation to cover the cost of not $10,000, but a $50,000 check. And the man was Bill Grubb. Bill wanted to be anonymous while he was alive because it wasn't about him. It was about what God could do. But he saw this teeter, and he saw this sway, and he saw this tipping, and he said, church, go that way. He gave the necessary nudge to go in the right direction, maybe a bit more of a nudge. Bill knew that the church needed that because COVID could either end up as a sinking stone or be used as a catalyst He believed in the gifts of the worship leaders and the church members here at Leewood UMC, and he knew that those gifts could have a great effect on the faith of others, and so he gave the push needed to tip the church into the future. Now, although it doesn't have the shock of a $50,000 spontaneous check, I've seen other members participate in the launching exercises similar to the blob as well by pulling weeds to make sure the landscape doesn't tip the wrong direction, coming early to make coffee, leading Sunday school classes or small groups, coordinating committee meetings, taking meals to those in need, and a multitude of other ways. How have you experienced a member of Leewood helping to launch you into experiencing the joy of God's kingdom? Moments like that are examples of how the kingdom of God is experienced and how it grows. It's why Jesus calls us to be generous with our time, our treasures, our talents, to bless others. In our scripture today, we heard Jesus' reminder that no servant can serve two masters, Either he hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Or put another way, you have to decide if you are going to serve the kingdom of God or the kingdom of self. 
Are you going to be preoccupied and pulled into the gravity of yourself and your stuff, or will you break free from the hold your stuff has on you and make the leap and launch yourself and others into joys unknown? The list of ministries I offer, the stories of people blessed, are are true riches of life. So often people are going after terracotta warriors. And the reason we talk about generosity and about overcoming the human tendency to gather for ourselves when we should be sharing with others is that Jesus wants us to be free to serve the kingdom of God and knows the way that the gravity of our stuff and our possessions can pull us away from one another and make life depressing. Jesus wants us to move forward in putting good in the world. I feel we're at a tipping point here at Leewood UMC at the moment. As things open back up, all churches are. People are looking for ways to connect, to have great opportunities to capitalize on. There's this groundswell of energy For instance, in our children and youth programs, people are looking for places to connect after a difficult time of separation. Now, as we plan how we as a church will connect people, it's always helpful to know the type of budget that we're working with, and that's why we do stewardship campaigns. We have some estimate of giving cards that some ushers are going to hand out here in a little bit. And I just invite you to pray over how God might be calling you to help the church tip in the right direction financially, but also with your prayers and your time and your talents. Because all those things are needed. The church isn't in a bad place, but we're at this tipping point of moving into this beautiful future. What we're able to do depends on our generosity of these four things. How is God calling us to give generously of our time, our talents, our treasures, and our prayers to the development of disciples and the expanding of the kingdom of heaven on earth? We'll talk about generosity a a little bit more next week as well, and then you can return your estimate of giving cards. But I'd like to leave you this morning with this quote from Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He said, Remember the Lord. He is the one who gives you the strength to be prosperous in order to establish the covenant he made with your ancestors. And that's how things exist now. When I got the call this morning that Wayne had passed, I was still thinking and reflecting upon Bill's life. And for those of you who don't know, just over a year ago, Bill went skydiving. He, at 80, began skydiving and went four times. That's why we have skydiving up here this morning. (laughs) This reminder of these people that chose to break free. And I know that some of you had Wayne come up to you after you visited and give you encouragement to come back and to get connected. And it looked so easy when Wayne did it. But if you talk to Wayne about it, he had moments of hesitation too. He he built up that muscle over time. It wasn't something that the very first time was super easy. It's something that we build up over time. We get used to nudging people gently in the right direction, and then we're able to step more into it. So this morning, I just want you to invite you to reflect on how you might live into the same spirit of giving and generosity with your time and with your talents. As we ask ourselves, what is next for the future of Leewood United Methodist Church? Amen.
Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of what you are doing in the world. Take these gifts as a token of our appreciation and our offer of our lives to extend your ministry in the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We have a couple of boxes here for donations for uh, refugees, shoes and blankets and comforters and invite you to bring these things as we prepare for colder months and want to take care of our neighbors. You can also drop them off in the office. And just a brief reminder that we will have some, uh, a little video for our Sunday schools and small groups uh, reading the book after service. At this time now, I invite you to receive a blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> 